Well, hello traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means each time we ask ourselves what happened today, what does it tell us about the coming ones? We do the show four times a week every Monday through Thursday broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Archived on YouTube and sent over channel L.A. Little. If you want to subscribe, reach up in the right hand corner anytime I push content. You'll get a notification as far as what did happen today. Let's take a look at the numbers. So if we pull up the S&P, look at it, uh, up 1.7%. Russell does outperform today, unlike the last couple. 2.2% NASDAQ, 1.8%, NDX 1.75%. If we look overseas, Nikkei was up a percent. We had big rallies over in Europe. That's what fueled our continuation rallies today. 26 on the CACs. Uh, the DAX up 1.75%. Over in uh, the uh, commodity land, they continued higher. Silver had a big spike, one point uh, or 2.7 percent. Uh, gold itself, bonds actually did flip around. They respected that uh, over and under that we looked at last night, but we had the big rally continuation without any kind of pullback today. I thought a late day we'd probably start to see that pullback. We got a little bit of consolidation, a little bit of selling into the close, uh, but not much. Let's see what the uh, the coming days look like based on the numbers. Let's start here with the S&P 500. So if we take the S&P and take a look at it, you know what we have situation here is that we have a bearish retest regenerate that was just blown away as we got over it uh, as if it wasn't even uh, there. Let's uh, draw the charts up here. So here's the bearish retest regen. This was the one that was broken on uh, uh, this move down and then we had another break lower that pushed back up um, when it came back up right that's the first place you'd expect it to try and hold you also had another one over here and then we also had uh, one in this area that had been broken previously so you have two swing point lows both of them broken and you come back and you get over both of them what does that tell us well it always tells us the same thing and that is is that what was down now is more or less sideways and uh, if we pull this back and look at it on a larger longer term time frame right we'll see it on the weekly for example you know what we see here is that sideways range building out now I had told members before um, and, and had not mentioned it on the air but I told members before when we were talking about this range let me draw the ranges in again when we were looking at these ranges before Right. What I told them is like, okay, so we have the same situation. We have this breakdown bars here, these two. But what you saw after that and what we should expect is that once you get those, you're going to come back up and it's going to be this push back up that fails. If in fact it does, that's going to probably lead to the larger move to the downside. And so here's the push back up, coming back up towards those highs. The real key on any kind of a larger failure is after you get some sort of a shock move like we just saw is you get a bounce back and then it fails and rolls over now the rug was pulled out back here what's going to pull the rug out here i don't know if it's going to be something to do with europe but that's that's what anybody would probably guess at this point but whatever it is if it's going to take place it's going to give us ex almost exact same setup we saw at the beginning of this year where we just collapse so as we end the night what we have is a setup that is starting to pull back or push back up on the weekly charts and potentially give us that potential to break down right on a longer term time frame after the big bounce if we look over at uh, other indexes let's take a look at the Nasdaq so here on the NASDAQ, we uh, we don't have quite as strong a bounce, but we actually do have the bearish retest regions that were gotten over as well. So you've got the same sort of picture here saying that, hey, the, the move down is probably sideways now instead of down. If we look at the NDX, which has been the weakest of the indexes, uh, that move down also gets back over the high of the low. And so that also says the same story. And finally, if we go to the Russell, now the Russell had been the strongest on the way up. Doesn't uh, display the same strength that we see elsewhere, but a pretty good move to the top side. 
the real question is is you know what is Europe going to do because I believe Europe is driving everything again like they have many times and uh, let's take a look at those charts and then see if there's anything there that's helpful uh, if we pull over let's go to the DAX first and unlike uh, here on our markets the DAX still hasn't gotten to the top of the breakdown bar right so the gap up here or the gap down uh, that gap over has 97.20 uh, we're not that far from it but getting to it now we did get to it on the French CACs and this is going to be the, really the test tomorrow so that top of that bar 419890 you get over that you close at 419532 that's a test failure on the bounce less volume suggesting this thing's going to flip around and try to come back tomorrow and so when i look at the uh, cacs you know given the big bounce today this one is set up to try and come back to the downside the strongest market uh, that we've been watching is the Swiss market. Swiss market takes a nice big bounce up way over the bar, stays over the bar. If you're going to be investing in Europe and trying to be invested long, uh, that looks like the bar you should be considering. Nikkei gets a little bounce, but really nothing much. Uh, if we look at Hong Kong, uh, same sort of thing. So if, if we're focused on what's going to happen tomorrow the only tell that we have is the CACs getting over and under and failing at the top of that breakdown bar and so my suggestion uh, would be that what we're going to see is uh, some sort of a pullback begin tomorrow now the question will be on our indexes if we go back to those is where do we move to as I'd outlined last night uh, you can expect some sort of an ABCD structure to set up to try to take this lower and it would be nested or take it higher and it would be nested. Well, you've already got the big move. I mean, it, it didn't even stop. So now you have to start thinking about the other side of this because you didn't get the nested case. And so it didn't do what I expected. I didn't think it'd be this strong. What's this going to look like if it's going to, you know, break down? Well, maybe something like that. But even to get there, you have to expect some sort of a pullback, right, wherever it may go, and then some sort of an attempt to push up again, and then a failure at the higher levels most likely. And so my, my guess here is what we're going to see is some sort of a pullback, and what you have to do neoclassically is go find your significant bars, look at those bars, ask yourself where they are, and then look at the structure of this once it comes back uh, to see how deep it will or will not come and last night uh, you know I, I talked about the potential for this thing to move back uh, a little bit higher and then fell well it moved a lot higher and so the scenario has changed and so now you know you read the tea leaves you see what it's doing and you, and you make uh, your move based on the latest information that's what neoclassical is about if we look over at the uh, TLT because this was the one I was focused on today I was curious to see if we were going to get a pullback here let me pull that chart up and we did and we got uh, you know because the question was is is there something larger happening in these markets uh, you know and if it were then this one would have just ignored this pullback setup from yesterday and just continued on well it didn't it actually did give us the pullback comes back has less volume so and it does go over it but it has less volume again once again suggesting it's going to try and pull back and it did today by the end of the day. Uh, in, in neoclassical, the, the first thing you always look for when you get a breakout is the retest regenerate that's going to take place. That's at your swing point highs. If you break down, it's your swing point lows on the way back. And so that's the area that you want to focus on. You know, if this comes back within six bars, uh, it can get into the deeper side of this. If it holds up here and holds this gap area and goes for more than six bars, then that first push back will probably only get into the top part of that bar. And so this tomorrow will be another big tell. Today it did what it was supposed to, and uh, the, the markets themselves were stronger than we expected, but we did see the behavior here that we expected as well. So tomorrow uh, is probably a pullback. Uh, I base that off of what's probably going to happen in Europe, and uh, we'll, more than likely we'll actually gap down in the morning would be my take. That's it for tonight. Have a great one. Take care.